were you going to tell the Australian public that you had a little bit of doubt about the photos? That implies that I was covering something up and I reject that completely. Over the past three weeks, the Prime Minister's standing has plummeted. And one of the issues that has hurt him most has been the children overboard affair. Mr Speaker, I tabled the report prepared by the Jennifer Bryant assistant... When Parliament reconvened, he tabled two reports which he hoped would restore his government's credibility on the issue. But neither report contained the most damaging evidence that has recently emerged about who knew the truth. That, that evidence was critical to this inquiry. It blew the, uh, the credibility of Reith on this issue out of the water. Everyone was also mindful that Reith that same night had a meeting with the Prime Minister to discuss the issue. Tonight Four Corners unravels how the truth was drowned out by a story that was too good to be false. At 9am Sunday on the 7th of October last year, the Prime Minister's task force on people smuggling met in Canberra. This was a group of high-powered public servants from the departments of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Defence, Immigration and Foreign Affairs. It was two days into the election campaign in which border protection was a central issue. It remains unclear who broke the news to the meeting, but probably Jane Holton from the Prime Minister's department said a report had been phoned in from Defence early that morning that asylum seekers had thrown their children overboard as HMAS Adelaide was trying to turn their boat back to Indonesia. All these public servants would have appreciated that in the election climate, this would be sensational news. The Secretary for the Department of Immigration, Bill Farmer, got a call from his minister at 10 to 10. He told Philip Ruddock the news. Well, By 11.30, the minister had told the rest of Australia. A number of people have jumped overboard um, and have had to be rescued. Um, more disturbingly, a number of children have been thrown overboard. Um, again, um, with the... Uh, intention of putting us under duress. Um, I regard these as some of the most disturbing practices um, that I have uh, that I have come across in the time that I am I've been involved in public life clearly planned and premeditated. A cable later sent by HMAS Adelaide has a detailed chronology of the events of that morning. At around 7.30, the asylum seekers were advised of the Navy's intent to use force. Warning shots were then fired 50 feet in front of their rickety vessel. At around 7.45, their boat was boarded and people jumped into the water. The boarding party saw a man preparing to throw a small child overboard the child was not thrown. In the middle of this chaos, Commander Banks was called to provide an update for the PM's People Smuggling Task Force. He believes to this day that all he said was that people were threatening to throw children overboard. But the diary notes kept by Brigadier Silverstone, who was at the other end of the phone, read, child thrown over the side. Brigadier Silverstone passed the information to Air Vice Marshal Tithridge, who phoned it through to the PM's task force. Somewhere along the line, child became children. In the late afternoon, when the task force reconvened, the defence representative raised a concern that he'd been unable to find any documentary evidence that children were thrown. Nevertheless, they cleared a paper which included a brief reference to passengers throwing their children into the sea. Sometime after 8pm, 
The paper was faxed to the then Minister for Defence, Peter Reith, and the Prime Minister. But John Howard had already gone public on the story earlier that day, on the strength of a phone call from Philip Ruddock. In the days that followed, there was the usual media round. It's a busy morning for anybody, especially a busy morning for our Prime Minister, Mr John Howard, who joins me in the studio this morning. Mr Howard, good morning. Good morning, Philip. Can we turn to the refugee issue? I mean, I was horrified, I think every parent would have been, about the, the image you had at the weekend of, uh, of, of boat people throwing their children overboard. What was your reaction? Well, to my that? reaction was, I don't want in Australia people who would throw their own children into the sea. There's something to me incompatible between somebody who claims to be a refugee and somebody who would throw their own child into the sea. It, it offends the natural instinct of protection and delivering security and safety to your children. So right. I, I don't accept The media began asking questions like how old were the children? I don't, I don't have that detail but I, I imagine um, uh, the sorts of uh, children who would be, uh, would be thrown uh, would be those who could be readily lifted and tossed without, uh, without any objection from them. Um, but I don't have that level of detail. Meanwhile, off Christmas Island, one day after the news first broke, the asylum seekers' boat was sabotaged and started to sink. As the day progressed, water entered its bowels. As it went down, around 200 men, women and children ended up in the ocean and were rescued by the Royal Australian Navy. The following day, Commander Norman Banks told Channel 10 there were photos of the rescue. They were emailed with captions including the date, October the 8th, to Defence Personnel and Defence Public Affairs. How are you, Kate? Nice to see you. How are you? How are you? Three days after the story broke, the Prime Minister was asked at an early morning doorstop what evidence did he have to back up his claim. Can you tell us um, how many children were thrown overboard? Were they wearing life jackets? What evidence there is that you've got yourself that children were thrown overboard? And can we have access to that evidence? Well, I was um, acting on advice uh, given to me by the Immigration Minister to whom I spoke on uh, Sunday shortly before I made the statement, the advice I had was that um, he had been informed they were thrown overboard, uh, there were life jackets, that's what I was informed. I can't tell you how many. As to the question of evidence, as you put it, uh, I'll make some inquiries and see what evidence um, can be made available. Are you still confident? The head of the Prime Minister's media unit rang Peter Reid's office to see if there were any photos that could be released. Reitz media advisor Ross Hampton had heard there were photos around and had demanded them urgently from Defence Public Affairs. For the benefit of the committee... Evidence of what happened then was given to the Senate Estimates Committee 10 days ago by Brigadier Gary Bornholt, the military advisor to Defence Public Affairs. And at about three o'clock in the afternoon, my staff officer came in and said to me that the minister's media advisor had spoken to her twice about uh, photographs that they wanted to release and he was specifically interested in the breakup of the people who had been in the water on the 7th of October and, and the numbers of women and children. Uh, she had tried to deal with him on, on two occasions to say to him that there was no evidence that we could find that would corroborate such a claim. Um, after he had, uh, as, as she said, got quite angry with her, uh, she decided that it was time to hand the problem over to me because I won't have my staff dealt with like that. Well, I don't. By 3.45, when Brigadier Bornholt got on to Reitz Media Advisor, Ross Hampton already had the now famous photos. The captions with the date had been removed. But Hampton was saying the photos showed a woman and a child in the sea on October the 7th. Now I said to him that my advice to you is that the photographs could not be of the 7th of October because Strategic Command have informed us 
that of the 14 people that they understand were in the water, there were no women or children. Uh, now, this conversation, uh, as I said, took place at quarter to four. Uh, he expressed concern with my advice and told me that the CDF had confirmed uh, with the minister that, that, that um, the photographs could be released and that, there and that there were women and children in the water. I said, I can't believe that. Now joining us in the studio. Despite this warning, 15 minutes later, Peter Reith went on ABC radio and broke the news that he had photographic evidence that the claims were true. Mr Reith, there's nothing in this photo that indicates these people either jumped or were thrown. Well, you're now questioning um, the veracity of what is being said. Those photos are produced as evidence of the fact that there were people in the water. You say it's a tight shot. It's as clear as day. Now, you may want to question the veracity of reports from the Royal Australian Navy. I don't, and I didn't either. But I have subsequently been told that they've also got film that film is apparently on HM, well, is on HMAS Adelaide. I have not seen it myself, and apparently the quality of it is not very good, and it's infrared or something. But mm -hmm. uh, I am told that someone has looked at it, and it is an absolute fact: children were thrown into the water. But you, you so do you still question that? I'm a, well, do you? I'm a journalist. I'll question anything well, until I get well, the proof. That's, well, I've, that's just my job. I've just given you the evidence. No, you've given me images. Well, and, uh, Virginia, if, if I, I mean, can quite frankly, if you don't accept that, if you don't accept that, you don't accept anything I say. After the interview, Brigadier Bornholt logged in to find out which two photos the minister and his advisor were referring to. The date on the captions: it was, as he suspected, October the eighth, the day after the incident was supposed to have occurred. I called the Minister's media advisor and left a message on his uh, mobile phone answering machine to say essentially that the advice I had given you earlier is correct. Ross Hampton says he never got the call. It's now emerged that the Prime Minister's own department had asked Defence Headquarters for evidence of what happened and a chronology of events. The chronology arrived on October the 10th with a footnote which read, there is no indication that children were thrown overboard. Maxmore Wilton, the head of Prime Minister and Cabinet, says his department dismissed the footnote because of the photos. And that subsequently on that day or the following day, photos were released by the Minister for Defence and the departmental officers concerned considered that that matter therefore had been and clarified because the photos at that stage were assumed to be of events on the 7th of October. Out on the Adelaide, Commander Norman Banks saw on the internet how the events of October the 7th were being misreported. On the morning of October the 10th, Banks informed Brigadier Silverstone that no children had been thrown in the water. Silverstone passed the information up the line to Rear Admiral Ritchie. None of the officers knew that the minister had been saying there was photographic evidence to back up the claim until they sat down that night to watch the ABC's 7.30 report. The Navy also released photos this afternoon of two young asylum seekers floating in the sea as proof that they were thrown overboard. Political the officers were aghast. They knew immediately the photos were of the day the ship sank and quickly rang around and up the chain of command. Right to the top, Admiral Barry. I told uh, Admiral Barry on the evening of the 10th that the photographs as shown on the television that night were not of the events that they purported to be. I had another conversation with Admiral Barry on the morning of the 11th uh, about the same subject matter about attempts to, uh, to get at the truth in Adelaide, about the need to produce statements, and Admiral Barry has, uh, has attested to that yesterday. Uh, I have no direct record. I have a record of those two events. I have no direct record of saying to Admiral Barry, this event never happened. Uh, but I have no doubt that I expressed uh, words uh, to that, of that nature. Uh, to Admiral Barry. Admiral Barry told the Senate that he rang Peter Reith that same day 
and told him the photos were wrong. How is it that the public record was never corrected in relation to those photographs? Well, that's not a question I can answer. But it's, would you accept that, Admiral? It is a reasonable question for me to ask you as CEO. It is, and it's not a question I can answer. Admiral Barry said that he also told Peter Reith there were defence personnel who had doubts that the incident had occurred at all, but that he stood by the first report. And uh, it is my view that the commanding officer's initial report, which I conveyed to the government, in the absence of compelling evidence, ought to stand. Now, if my commanders are absolutely thoroughly convinced that I am wrong, then I would expect them to come back to me and say, CDF, you are wrong. Now, that never happened. While all this was happening, um, Brigadier Bornhold had tracked down the detailed chronology for the events of October the 7th that had been signalled to Canberra from HMAS Adelaide. On October the 11th, he went to see Admiral Barry's Chief of Staff. And informed him that I had that chronology and that it indicated that there were no women or children in the water. From my perspective, I had brought to the attention of those people in my chain that I should have brought the attention to. I had done that. This was on the same day that Admiral Barry had told Minister Reith there were doubts. Reith is reported to have then advised Barry that the issue would not be further pursued. Over the next three weeks, the government did go quiet about asylum seekers throwing their children in the sea. But the bigger issue of border protection remained central to the election campaign. John Howard and Peter Reith went to see the Adelaide off to the Persian Gulf and thanked the sailors for their difficult work. Good morning. How are you all? These were the men and women who were supposed to have seen the asylum seekers throw their children in the sea. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that we were very proud of what you did. It was difficult. It involved uh, sensitive responses and it involved um, handling a very delicate situation and you did it superbly well. Hi there, Good to see you. Good luck. None of the sailors were allowed to speak to the media. Going to be away over Christmas, though. Yeah. In fact, even Defence Public Affairs had been instructed not to deal with any press inquiries on the border protection policy known as Operation Relics. Journalists who asked questions were directed to Minister Reith's media advisor, Ross Hampton. Ross Hampton was among those who I believe was misleading, uh, the, inform misleading the media uh, quite deliberately. The, uh, the note... Jenny McHenry is the head of Defence Public Affairs. Is it normally the case that uh, such media contact is uh, always directed to the Minister's office? It depends on the situation, Senator. It, is, it isn't normally the case, but on some, on some matters it was. On Operation Relics, that was the case. Mm. And who made that decision? It was a, a decision that was made in consultation with the Minister's office. At the request of the Minister's office? Uh, it, well, ultimately it was the request of the Minister's office, yes. It was at the request of the Minister's office. Who made that request to your division? The request came through the media advisor. That's Mr. Mr. Ham Hampton. Hampton. The Reese office was talking about the possibility of yeah. releasing. The implication of the way they answered questions was that the video would back up their case, even though they said uh, it was grainy and unclear. They were implying that they had evidence to back up their case and these uh, questions could uh, and would be answered. On October the 31st, when Defence Minister Reith was up in Darwin to see off the Sydney, Brigadier Silverstone told him the video does not show a child being thrown in the water. Reith replied with words to the effect, well, we'd better not see the video then. By the end of the last week of the election, word was leaking out from the sailors on the Adelaide. 
They told the residents of Christmas Island that the whole thing never happened. The residents, in turn, passed it on to the media. Gordon Thomason is a Christmas Island councillor. The story is starting to filter through. The allegation that the refugees were throwing their children in the water, that uh, story seems not to be true. And we had some anonymous phone calls here into this office saying it's not true, I'm a member of the Defence Force, I'm disgusted, check it out. On November the 7th, the Australian put the story on the front page of the paper using only anonymous sources quoting anonymous naval officers. But the impact was dramatic. Admiral Barry was overseas and Air Marshal Houston was acting in his job as Chief of the Defence Forces for just two days. One of them was November the 7th. As soon as he saw the Australian article, Houston went to Defence Headquarters and met with Brigadier Gary Bornholt. Bornholt gave him the chronology cabled from the Adelaide that four weeks earlier he'd drawn to the attention of Admiral Barry. From that it became clear what it appeared to me as was that yes, people had jumped into the water um, but there was no evidence there to suggest that uh, women and children had jumped in the water. There was Air Marshal Houston then called the Minister for Defence, so Peter Reith, with Gary Bornholt on the speakerphone beside him. Um, I started off by telling him According to Houston, he told Peter Reith from what he'd seen, the evidence simply wasn't there. Fundamentally, there was nothing to suggest uh, that uh, women and children had... Uh, uh, been thrown into the water. I think from, uh, I then went on uh, to, as, as I can recall it, to describe um, the fact that the second day there was a rescue operation uh, when the, uh, the vessel sank and that uh, the photograph uh, from what I had just been advised related to the events of the 8th of October. Uh, after I'd, uh, I'd given him uh, this rundown of, uh, of what had happened, um, there was uh, silence for quite a while. Uh, it seemed to me that he was stunned, surprised, uh, and uh, essentially uh, said, then said, well, uh, I think we'll have to look at uh, releasing the video. I omitted to say earlier on, I also explained to him uh, that the video was inconclusive in terms of uh, uh, proving whether any, any women or children um, were thrown into the water due to its poor quality. Can you corroborate the evidence that Air Marshal Houston has provided to this Senate Estimates Committee this evening? Uh, yes, I can, Senator. The phone call was made on a speakerphone uh, with only the two of us in the room. This evidence was the most dramatic and damaging to emerge from the Senate hearings. It had not been mentioned in either of the reports that had been tabled in Parliament. Thank you. Well, Houston gave evidence that Reef seemed surprised and shocked, and it was a very similar sort of feeling in the hearing room itself, because that was the first time that there was clear proof that Reef had been warned that the whole story was false, that the photographs had been misused, and that warning was not passed on to the public. I can't tell you how long the telephone conversation was, but my memory of it is I didn't have a very good line. Uh, to say that this was, from my perspective, clear and unequivocal advice, well, I'm sorry, That night, Peter Reith was on the phone again, this time to Prime Minister John Howard at the Lodge. It was three days before the election. Both men say that Reith did not mention the phone call he'd received from Air Marshal Houston. The Prime Minister has, however, recently said that Peter Reith did raise doubt about the photos. Well, he, um, he indicated to me that, that um, you know, there was some debate about whether they were the one day or the next, and, and that's reflected in the report. So you might have been aware, or you might have been told at that stage that they may have been photos from the following day. No, no he just said there was, there was doubt about it. By this time, doubt about the photos would not have come as a complete surprise to some of John Howard's personal staff. 
there was already tea room gossip being passed from his department to his task force to his staff and reportedly on to the departmental head, Maxmore Wilton. And I think there was some speculation in one of today's newspapers that the task force alerted both myself and the Prime Minister's office uh, to that there was some question mark over... Uh, I read that. Now, I've, I've, I've said to the media, I have no such recollection. The following morning, the video was finally released. It did not show that people had thrown their children overboard, but instead that a man had held his child up to the railings. At no stage did I claim that my claim was based on the existence of a video. I was subsequently informed in writing that the incident had occurred without any qualifications. I had every reason to believe that. I still have every reason to, irrespective of what is on the video. Mr Howard, Frank Kelly, the 730 report. Defence sources are saying At lunchtime, John Howard gave his pre-election press club address and took questions. Frank Kelly put it directly to the Prime Minister that defence forces were saying the photos were not of the children overboard. ...were in the water because the boat was sinking, not because people had been thrown overboard, children had been thrown overboard. John Howard chose not to disclose that he too had heard of doubt about the photos the night before. Well, Fran, I don't know what defence sources you're referring to, but let me just take you through the sequence on this very quickly. The claims that were made <clears throat> by Mr Ruddock and Mr Reith on the Sunday, I think it would have been Sunday the 7th of October, it was just after the election was called, they were based on advice from defence sources. My own comments were based on in my discussions with Mr Ruddock and Mr Reith. On the 9th of October, uh, <clears throat> I received um, an ONA report that read in part as follows. Asylum seekers wearing life jackets jumped into the sea and children were thrown in with them. Such tactics have previously been used elsewhere, for example by people smugglers in Iraqi asylum seekers on boats intercepted by the Italian Navy. When Kim Jones, the head of the Office of National Assessment, heard that John Howard had quoted the ONA report, he was stunned. Were you aware that the Prime Minister was going to quote from that ONA report? No. At the press club? No. No one contacted you? No. Not from the department or the Prime Minister's office? No. Bolt from the blue, was it? Yes. Kim Jones knew that the ONA report might well be based only on media clippings of what government ministers had already said something he has since confirmed. Jones had specifically warned Miles Jordana from John Howard's office that this was the case, and he'd put the warning in writing. He's aware that we're uncertain about the origin of the uh, reference to the children overboard and that it may have been based on minister's statement. <laughs> the Prime Minister's day was about to go from bad to worse. At 4.30pm, the Chief of the Navy Vice Admiral David Shackleton was questioned by reporters on the dockside in Perth. Mr. Reith reported emphatically that children were thrown in the water. Well, I, I can't comment on what Mr. Reith said. And there Has Mr. Photos. Reith seen the video? Sorry. Under pressure to say if the Navy had advised children were thrown, he replied, "Our advice was that were people being threatened to be thrown in the water, and I don't know what happened to the message after that." This was the first on-the-record statement distancing the Navy from the claims. The story had barely run on the afternoon news when Admiral Shackleton got a call from Peter Reith's office and issued this statement. My comments in no way contradict the Minister. I confirm the Minister was advised that Defence believed children had been thrown overboard. Well, Prime Minister, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, who was it that convinced Admiral Shackleton to make this news statement? I think that's a bit offensive to him. I certainly didn't speak to him and I didn't ask the Defence Minister to speak to him and I'm not aware that anybody has spoken to him. I think that's a pretty offensive question. I had a uh, telephone conversation with Mr Hindi, who was the Minister's Chief of Staff, uh, and in that conversation he related to me that the story had uh, broken in the eastern states that I had contradicted the Minister. 
uh, it was never my intention to contradict the minister and I checked what it was that I had said. In that statement, I had made a technically incorrect statement because defence had advised the minister that children had been thrown over the side. At the same time as Shackleton was backpedalling, Air Marshal Houston and Brigadier Bornholt were following up the phone call they'd made to Peter Reith the day before. They were briefing a range of defence personnel that the minister had been told there was no evidence. Uh, back, back briefing, Strategic Command, Air Vice Marshal Tivith Ridge, DCN. Well, that's probably not the right acronym anymore, but... Um, yeah, Dep Deputy Chief of Navy. Yeah. Uh, this all occurs on the 8th? Yes, and... Um, and Dr Hawke? On the 9th. The following day, November the 10th, was the day of the federal election. No, 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 I need yeah. Three days after the election, the Prime Minister directed Jennifer Bryant from the Prime Minister's department to conduct an inquiry into the affair. A week later, Admiral Barry followed suit, giving the job to Major General Powell. Both Bryant and Powell found there was no evidence to support the claim that children were thrown in the water. In one of the most extraordinary performances, in this whole sorry saga, two weeks ago, Admiral Barry rejected the finding. I, I don't see it that way. But Barry saw no compelling reason to disbelieve the original disputed account of what the commander of the Adelaide said on the day, that a child or children went overboard. And until it, somebody can show me compelling evidence that he was mistaken in making that first report, I will stand by my advice. In other words, in other words, Mr Speaker, last night... The Prime Minister could not contain his delight at what the Admiral said. You know, they, they thought they had an extra set from the, from the Air Marshal, Member for Lingari, Barry. They thought they had an extra set from the Air Marshal. I think you've had a decent torpedo from the Admiral, Mr Speaker. <laughs> and, uh, and, that, and that is really... I mean, this was meant to be, you know, this was, this was going to be the big one, Mr Speaker. The big one is that the senior military advisor to the government wasn't is the saying as Cunningham. recently as last night, Mr Speaker, saying as recently as last night that he never sought to recant the advice that he gave to the minister, Mr Speaker. Unfortunately, there is still a very big stench about this and people, I suspect, uh, the range of emotions in the Defence Force when Admiral Barry was seen to be backing the government in this sordid affair would have been one of astonishment to anger. One week later, that anger forced Admiral Barry to concede that his position was untenable. I have now reached the conclusion that there is no evidence to support the claim that children were thrown overboard. But the damage had already been done. Do you feel like a deal, Admiral? Uh, I don't feel like a deal. Why not? I don't feel that I have in any way uh, let down my organisation. But Admiral Barry's failure to support his senior officers in their efforts to get the truth out into the open has lost him the loyalty that his job requires and public respect. Admiral Barry, do you believe that the Why are you running away? Why won't you answer the question? Why are you afraid of more Barry? questions, Admiral? That's not the act of a brave soldier or sailor, isn't it? The Power Report concludes a further inquiry would be needed to establish what Peter Reith knew. The Bryant Report finds that neither Philip Ruddock nor John Howard were advised by their departments or officials that the claims were wrong. Came clear to me that, but the uh, evidence that has emerged since these reports uh, were tabled has thrown up many more questions. One of the most intriguing is as follows. After Air Marshal Houston spoke with Peter Reith on the 7th of November, what did the Defence Minister tell John Howard when they spoke that night? It's not easy to get an answer. Look, I wonder if we could start just by clarifying a few specific things. On November the 7th, 
the acting chief of the defence forces met your minister Peter Reith and told him that the photos that were being used as evidence that children were being thrown overboard just weren't the right photos. You met with Peter Reith that night. You discussed the photos. Was it clear to you at the end of that meeting that there were real doubts whether or not they were the right photos? Well, I didn't um, meet Mr Reith and Air Marshal Halston didn't meet Mr Reith either. There were oh, sorry. There were, there were telephone conversations. There were telephone conversations. Telephone con well, uh, I can only repeat what I've said before, uh, and that is that um, uh, Mr Reith indicated to me there had been no uh, advice uh, contradicting the original advice. The main subject of our uh, discussion uh, at that time was the release of the video, and I wanted to release the video. Uh, uh, even though it was inconclusive because I felt uh, in the interest of disclosure that video should be released. But you've indicated that you did discuss the photos. Yes, I, I indicated that. there, there, were, there was, well, let me finish. There was an allusion uh, to the debate about the, the discussion about, about the photographs. Yes, the I've indicated. doubtful nature? Look, I've, I, I just repeat what well, I've I, said I'd before. just like to clarify exactly. No, was, I, it indicated well, to you, was it indicated to you that there was any doubt that they were the wrong photos? Look, I, the right I, photos? I can only repeat what I've said before. Well, it's an important issue, isn't it? Because yes, you and that's asked... why I'm very careful in what I'm saying, because it is an important issue. Well, your minister had been told that day that they were the wrong photos. Did he indicate to you in your conversation that night that they were the wrong photos? Well, I haven't had a discussion with Mr Reith uh, about his discussion with Air Marshal Houston because until the Air Marshal gave that evidence, I didn't know of that discussion. Yeah, but you so, knew you'd had the discussion. Uh, you knew that you'd no, actually no, had the discussion I, with Peter I knew Reith. I'd had a discussion with Peter Mr Reith, but I'm talking about the discussion. Yeah. I'm answering your question. No, I'm just asking you about your conversation with Peter Reith. I'm no. not asking you about what no, Houston said. I'm sorry, said. You, you asked me uh, about the... You, you implied that I knew that he'd had a discussion with Air Marshal no, no. Houston. No, no, I'm asking. Well, well, I'm sorry, that's what you implied. Well, let, let's get it clear. I'm just asking, mm. did he indicate to you that there were doubts about the photos? No, uh, I've already answered that. And you've already answered that, <coughs> well, yes. Well, I have already answered Great. that. No, no, I've answered that question. I indicated in a news conference that there had been reference to the discussion reference about to that. Them. Yes. No doubts. You haven't, you haven't admitted that any doubts about the photos were raised with you? I've ad look, when you say I've admitted, I'm not... Sorry, I mean, I mean are, we, are, we having, are we having, are we, are we no, having no, a serious... No, no, I'm sorry. No, I think what you're just trying to do uh, is to you know, steamroll a certain answers. Now, let me make this clear. Mm -hmm. We discussed the video, and I made it very clear to him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that the video... Uh, you know, ought to be released. Right. I had some discussion uh, with a member of his staff mm -hmm. who had viewed the video. There was, in the terms that I've already explained, uh, a reference to the debate about the photographs and... Uh, now, that's exactly what I want to ask <coughs> you about, though. I don't want to ask you about the video. I'm just mm. asking you whether or not you were given any indication mm. that there were doubts about the photos. That's all I'm asking you. I have already indicated... And you said yes. No, I've already indicated that there was a reference to it. A I would have. I would try, it. quite frankly, mm. I'm not going to testify to the exact words I've used without checking them, because otherwise that will then be thrown back by you or somebody else at me. So I'm... I'm you can question me all mm. night, I, mean, about I would simply say mm. I made a reference to that mm -hmm. and that reference was correct. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to add to that. All right. Well, the following day you were asked very directly mm. and very specifically mm. about the photographs. Mm. I mean, Frank <coughs> Kelly put it to you mm. that Defence Forces were saying they were the wrong photographs. Mm. Mm. Why didn't you indicate at that stage that you'd discussed the photographs the night before and the issue had, in your words, been raised with you? Well, the reason, the reason why I'd moved on from the photographs... No, but she was asking no, no, you I'm about sorry, the photographs. I'm sorry, well, I... I mean, mean you, you no, might I'm, want to move on. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Public... No, what, I'd like, what I would like to do is to be allowed to answer your question sure. and not constantly interrupted. The reason why I gave the answer that I did to Fran Kelly was that in my mind the important thing was the release of the video. And I don't have anything to regret or retract about the answer that I gave to mm. Fran Kelly. Mm -hmm. At all times, mm -hmm. uh, the explanation that I have given is consistent with my clear recollection of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, I repeat 
I was never told by my department, mm -hmm. I was never told by Mr Rees that the original advice uh, had been contradicted and, and that remains the position and nothing has emerged, nothing has emerged uh, to alter that fact. When were you going to tell the Australian public that you had a little bit of doubt about the photos? That implies that I was covering something up and I reject that completely. When were you? I mean, no, no, was, well, there, was I mean, there never I've going already, to be an I've occasion? I've already answered. I know you don't yeah. like the answer because it doesn't suit the line of questioning, but uh, the, the reality is that the Australian people, when they voted, were voting on our asylum seeker policy. And I would also remind you that uh, people were asking me questions in the wake of the release of the video and it was my decision to release the video. I knew the video was inconclusive and I insisted that it be released in case there were an allegation of some kind of cover-up. Does it worry you that polls indicate that a lot of Australians don't believe you on this issue? Well, Liz, um, given the media and other focus on this issue, it's not surprising that some polls would indicate people didn't agree with me and, are, and you know, they, they are falling fairly evenly. But look, I am... Uh, I know what I knew and I know that I had never been given um, advice that contradicted the original advice. I know that I used that original advice in good faith and I also know that this was not the issue that swung the election, as most of the media campaign is implying. Will you be asking for Admiral Barry's resignation? No, I won't. You're happy with the advice he gave to your government? Look, look I'm, I look at his, the job he's done... He's changed his mind. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The most important things that Admiral Barry has done relate to things far different from the Children Overboard Affair. What you must understand, and what Admiral Barry's critics must understand, is that at the time all of these events were taking place, he had far more important responsibilities, such as, or, such as organising Australia's participation in the war against terrorism. These events were taking place at the very time, and I think it shows the strange priorities of people who seek to be Admiral Barry's critics to ignore the fact that as CDF, his main responsibility, his overwhelming responsibility at that time, was overseeing our involvement in the war against terrorism. I think in relation to that and in relation to our commitment to East Timor, Admiral Barry has done a very good job and it's because I look at his entire career and his entire role uh, that I very strongly support him. Well, when people have the information that the most senior officers in the military have gone to their chief and said, there is information out there that has misled the Australian public. People do take that seriously. People don't like being misled. And it's fair enough for them to expect not to be misled. The point I'm making is that at the time these events were taking place, Admiral Barry's greater responsibilities were in relation to our involvement in the war against terrorism. I say in his very strong defence as CDF that I think the great responsibilities he's had over the last four years, East Timor and the war against terrorism, he's uh, discharged very effectively. And finally, can you reassure the Australian public or tell the Australian public, do you now believe that the incident of children being thrown overboard did not happen? Well, the evidence from those who've you know, spoken most recently, recently on it indicates that. And I can only go on yeah, what I'm told. I was originally told it had happened. I was given advice in writing by a joint task force that it had happened. Now that has been revised, just as I accepted the original advice and acted on it, I have to accept the most recent advice that's come to my attention. That it never Because happened. I wasn't there and I can only act on advice. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Peter Reith and Admiral Barry declined to be interviewed for the program. It remains to be seen who will give evidence and what answers emerge from the upcoming Senate inquiry into the whole affair.